Okay, so here's the situation we're going to, uh, to look for a confidence interval for the difference of two means. What, so we're looking at two different populations. Each population has a variable, x1 and x2 respectively. We're, ca we're interested in that parameter, the population mean of each of those, and we're interested in how those two compare. So we're going to take a sample, uh, maybe of size n1 from the first population and a sample of n2 from the second population, and and consider the statistic that is the difference in those two means, x1 bar minus x2 bar. If we looked at every single possible sample of this size under appropriate conditions, this distribution will be, the distribution of all of those statistics is going to be normally distributed. We're not going to be able to look at every single sample. We look at just one individual sample and calculate the difference in those two means. That's our point estimate. What we want to do is build a confidence interval uh, <clears throat> about that point estimate and we'll do that in the following way. So there's our, our one population, the other population. We took samples. We calculated the difference between the two sample means. We're going to look down here in the in a standard Z distribution, and we want to have a, a confidence level. Ours is 90-something percent. We'll come back and look at that in a minute uh, here. That means that there's going to be, a, outside of that, this tail and this tail is going to be alpha, and so this amount in here will be alpha divided by 2. And what we want to find is this particular point right here that will tell how many standard deviations we need to be away so that we'll have this confidence level uh, centered in the origin. Okay, so that's what we're going to... Whoa! We're going to need, to, instead of a Z distribution, we're going to need to use a T distribution here. And so we're going to need to know the degree of freedom We'll need to know what the standard error is, of, uh, which means the standard deviation of the distribution of the, of the sample statistic. We'll need to know what that is, and we'll need to know a degree of freedom to do this problem. So let's build a script. So in the interest of time, I've entered the given data into our script already. I like to put things in in the order that they are presented to us. So N1, the sample size that we're taking from the first population is 35. Somebody's already calculated the mean of that sample for us, 2.58, and the standard deviation of the sample was 0 0.32. And the same for the second population. I've entered that data in. Uh, we were interested in the confidence level. Where have we got that? That's right there. 98%. So there's a the confidence level is 98 percent. All right, so now let's go back and look at this, uh, the three distribution uh, chart, and we can kind of follow through what else we need to put into our script. Okay, so so far we know what n1 is, we know what n2 is, we know what these x bar and, and information is. So here we are. I'm going to need to calculate this alpha divided by 2 so that I can find out what t is. Let's uh, put that information in. So the area outside the confidence level will be 1 minus the confidence level. That's what we're going to call alpha. And then I'm going to say a is alpha divided by 2. So a is this little area up here. Now the degree of freedom in this case is going to need to be calculated by that Smirthwaite uh, formula, which uh, needs to know what A and B are, so that's uh, S1 squared divided by N1 and S2 squared divided by N2. So I'm going to build those so that I can build that degree of freedom. And that's also the standard error is the square root of this amount plus this amount. 
So it's easy to build those first, build the standard error, then build the degree of freedom. <clears throat> then we can find this T value, that critical T value, simply by using a QT norm. This is a T distribution. We want to find a quantile, so a QT would be the right R function to do that. Remember that a <clears throat> that an R function needs to know the area below. So if this area above is A, then the area below will be 1 minus A. And so I can find the, the T value is QT 1 minus A, and then of course with the degree of freedom. Once we know that, then it's going to be handy to have X bar D, the difference in those two. It will be easier to have that uh, handy. And the margin of error, notice <coughs> in our problem here, they want us to say what, because it's this plus minus stuff, they're asking, well, what is the difference between the two means, and then what is the margin of error that we need to, <coughs> to add to it? So those are the two pieces of information that we need. And we can run that script. And there are the two values that we've put in here, and we've checked them to verify that they are correct. Okay, that's it.